Dolly Madison Flees the White House. Following their victory at the Battle of Bladensburg on August 24, 1814, British soldiers head to Washington intending to destroy the government buildings and cause as much havoc as they could. President Madison hurriedly wrote a message to his wife Dolly, who was still in the White House, to flee. The atmosphere at the presidential mansion was one of controlled panic. The First Lady directed the efforts to save as many state documents and other important possessions as could be done. One of the most prized was the full-length portrait of George Washington, which hung in the state dining room. Mrs. Madison was also aware that the British had boasted that if they could capture her, they would send her to England in chains to be exhibited on the streets of London. Some years later, Dolly Madison wrote a letter to her sister to describe the events of that time. Dear Sister, my husband left me yesterday morning to join General Winder. He inquired anxiously whether I had courage or firmness to remain in the President's house until his return on the morrow or succeeding day, and on my assurance that I had no fear but for him and the success of our army, he left, beseeching me to take care of myself and of the cabinet papers, public and private. I have since received two dispatches from him, written with a pencil. The last is alarming because he desires I should be ready at a moment's warning to enter my carriage and leave the city, that the enemy seems stronger than it had at first been reported, and it might happen that they would reach the city with the intention of destroying it. I am accordingly ready. I have pressed as many cabinet papers into trunks as to fill one carriage. Our private property must be sacrificed, as it is impossible to procure wagons for its transportation. I am determined not to go myself until I see Mr. Madison safe, so that he can accompany me, as I hear of much hostility towards him. Disaffection stalks around us. My friends and acquaintances are all gone, even Colonel C. with his hundred, who were stationed as a guard in this enclosure. French John, a faithful servant, with his usual activity and resolution, offers to spike the cannon at the gate and lay a train of powder, which would blow up the British should they enter the house. To the last proposition, I positively object, without being able to make him understand why all advantages in war may not be taken. Wednesday morning, 12 o'clock. Since sunrise, I have been turning my spyglass in every direction and watching with unwearied anxiety, hoping to discover the approach of my dear husband and his friends. But alas! I can decry only groups of military wandering in all directions, as if there was a lack of arms or of spirit to fight for their own fireside. Three o'clock. Will you believe it, my sister? We have had a battle or skirmish near Bladensburg, and here I am still within sound of the cannon. Mr. Madison comes not. May God protect us. Two messengers, covered with dust, came bid me to fly, but here I mean to wait for him. At this late hour a wagon has been procured, and I have had it filled with plate and the most valuable portable articles belonging to the house. Whether it will reach its destination, the Bank of Maryland, or fall into the hands of British soldiery, events must determine. Our kind friend Mr. Carroll has come to hasten my departure, and in a very bad humor with me, because I insist on waiting until the large picture of General Washington is secured, and it requires to be unscrewed from the wall. This process was found too tedious for these perilous moments. I have ordered the frame to be broken and the canvas taken out. 
It is done, and the precious portrait placed in the hands of two gentlemen of New York for safekeeping. And now, dear sister, I must leave this house, or the retreating army will make me a prisoner in it by filling up the road I am directed to take. When I shall again write to you, or where I shall be tomorrow, I cannot tell. <laughs>